go on a surf road trip to Rakeland. I wake up in the morning in this great blue state. Golden fingers caress my face. Slips through the window. Hi, Kate. On a silky breeze. A Hi, dreamer's life. <laughs> Plants on the sea. but sitting on this uh, dune. I know it's been a while since I checked in, but I'm back. I'm here in Taronga. I've been here for almost two months now and I'm just settling into my studies. I'm studying communications media at the moment and getting used to the, you know, life in civilization. Um, I'm really enjoying New Zealand actually. I've, I've always wanted to live here and um, I thought basically why not now? Uh, it's a pandemic, you can't be traveling so it's a good time to be settling down, studying, learning something. To catch you up, I have been doing a little bit of stuff for Tonga after the whole tsunami and um, COVID situation over there. Um, I have been asked to do a couple of speeches at Lions Clubs and for UNICEF here. If anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, you can go back and check out this video. Um, there was a tsunami earlier this year in Tonga and it kind of devastated the entire country. And now they've been hit with COVID, so they're in a bit of a, a situation at the moment. I look forward to talking to my friend from Tonga who's going to give me an insight on how things are over there and how it was going through that. I'm talking with Kaylee. Kaylee uh, was my tutor many years ago. I am Kaylee Sangia. And I obviously started off working for you guys in the MUCA or actually came as a volunteer and then just fell in love with Tonga and stayed. Um, I'm now married to a Tongan and have a one-year-old daughter. For the past two years, we were managing a resort on Ewa Island. Tell me about the night of the, the eruption and the tsunami. For sure. So actually, for us, it was probably already started the day before. So on, on Friday, there was um, some eruptions and obviously people were posting pictures of the the ash cloud that they could see rising from the volcano. And there were a lot of videos circulating on social media about a um, sort of a mini tsunami kind of suction down at the wharves in Tsangatapu. The police drove down on the Friday and told us we have to evacuate because of a tsunami warning we were actually supposed to be going to the main island we had my daughter's first birthday coming up so we were supposed to be celebrating all that so we actually had packed up everything we, they didn't take any passengers back the ferry went back on its own because of the tsunami warning um we then tried to get a flight and the flights weren't going because of 
suspected ash in the air. So, uh, yeah, so we were we were still stuck there. And actually, when we picked our guests up, we we told them we we didn't feel comfortable going back down to the resort until the tsunami warning was cancelled. So we actually went up. Um, we sort of drove around. It was a beautiful island, lots of hills. Um, Theo, you were there last year, so you you know it. So we stayed up the top of the hill with our guests that were there uh, for just for a few hours. So yeah, the day before we were already anxious and the tsunami warning was called off and we were actually still naively trying to organize getting back to Tonga Tapu. Just before the, the tsunami happened, I'd gone for a swim with my daughter Lena. Uh, Tomasi was actually up the top of the hill. There was a, a rugby tournament on, so he was watching the rugby tournament. And we got back and I was bathing Lena after the swim and um, I have three dogs, and they started scratching at the door. And I actually opened the door to tell them off because I wasn't sure what the, what on earth they were doing. And um, the minute I opened the door, all three of them rushed into the, the bathroom, and I was like, oh, this is pretty strange. And I, I thought maybe someone, you know, was shouting at them or something like that. Mm. And um, I closed the bathroom door again, and just after that, I got this, like, really strange feeling and ringing in my ears um and the dogs at this point were crying and probably about two minutes later was the first huge bang explosion I don't know what you want to call it and um obviously being alone in the room you're not sure if you've imagined how big it was or if it was just the thunder sound the next explosion happened which was a lot bigger and the windows were actually sort of shaking the felt like the pressure in the room was sort of completely sucked out kind of hard to tell now but there were a number of explosions that happened and yeah. when one guy said oh, I think a car has maybe exploded or something like that sort of that real explosion kind of sound and I said I think it's a volcano and um, while we were trying to figure out what to do when the really really big explosion happened we all sort of went into panic mode like just get out of there I was not evacuating from a tsunami it sounds really silly now but I was I was physically evacuating from the volcano because the sounds were so loud and so deafening. I mean, I honestly, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but I thought we were going to die. <laughs> like I thought the earth was going to rip up. I I was imagining like flaming rocks coming down at us next. I, I wasn't even evacuating from the water. I was pretty shaken up at that point. Um, but yeah, we got up. We got to a, to a shop up the top trying to figure out what to do we had guests that we've now evacuated as well at this point i was just trying to get to the other side of the island as far away that i knew where the volcano was just you know put distance between ourselves and where the even though we are actually already quite far away from the volcano it just i just wanted that distance yeah while we were waiting outside the shop obviously for our other guests to join us and we just ran in and i just got some some water and not even sure what we bought in that first shopping trip. I, it was not it was not anything important, I can tell you that. I think it was like very random things. We finally got our guests all together. We went to this other guest house. Um, we were all still pretty shaken, so we kind of all sat down for a little bit. And, and, and this, was, the, this was all on the Saturday night, like around sunset, wasn't it? Yeah, all around sunset. But it was crazy because when that ash cloud came over, it, it all went really darkly. I think on Tongatapu they got bigger rocks, but we got quite small sort of pumice stone size, you know, coin sized rocks that fell. Um, but a lot of ash already. The you know the bathroom obviously if they hadn't closed the windows in time already. There was ash inside there, and I'd managed to get a brief message out to my mum, to the owner of the resort, and I think I. Yeah, I managed to put one message on Facebook just saying that we're okay. But I think I got the message out and maybe a second later we lost all um all Facebook connection, all internet connection. Yeah. I think I wasn't even sure if it posted. So for the days after that where we had no internet, I wasn't really sure if, if that had even got on there. Um yeah. luckily I got a, a WhatsApp message to my family. When my mom called me, I think she saw the look on my face and the panic in my voice and she was like, Kelly, are you okay? And I was like, Mom, I just can't talk right now. And I put the phone down. And um, yeah, so she, I I mean, I feel really sorry for them because they obviously had this sort of panicked message, panicked phone call, and then we lost all internet connection. And I guess all that was going all over Facebook was that satellite image of um, of what happened. <laughs> and that night, we knew it, 
we knew that it was obviously a big thing that had happened, but I don't think, I mean, we fully did not grasp how big it, yeah. it was actually. Uh, we didn't have much communication. It was quite insular, but slowly, luckily we had phone calls. So slowly we were calling people on the main island and hearing the extent of what happened. I mean, they told me that the West side was, was gone and it was really hard to really grasp that. I mean, when someone says, it's gone. So I said, oh, Tafu Holtis, they said, yeah, completely wiped out by the, the tsunami. So, yeah. I mean, at that time, I thought people were just almost over-exaggerating a bit because it seemed crazy when they said completely gone. Luckily, I mean, while there was damage to the resort, it was sort of, um, the, so the main restaurant area was pretty badly damaged. Uh, water rushed right through it, rushed right through the kitchen, and our room was flooded. So, everything sort of on the floor was in ankle deep water and yeah. what was worse about it wasn't wasn't just water it was ash water so everything was just black and drudgy and calling I was trying to call people in in the muka I tried to call Fina I tried and couldn't get through at all and I'd also tried to call Darren and Nina and Mother Fanua. we couldn't get through to them so I mean for even for us that we're here in Tonga we had this like real crazy feeling that maybe you know that I don't know, those places in Hapai could have been fully wiped out. It was, you know, yeah. we even had that anxiety of of not knowing what happened because we couldn't get in contact with them or Vavau at all. So while we could speak to people on the main island, we actually couldn't speak to anyone in Hapai. One of my first thoughts was was you got, was the the beach barn in Namuka and all the people in the village over there. Yeah, because we're, like, we're extremely close to the volcano there. Um, yeah, and I remember you guys also yeah. were affected by Cyclone Harold, so I knew that if we, if we felt that sort of force, just with um with the tsunami, that it would probably be worse for you because you guys are a little bit closer to to the volcano. We made the decision to go back down and stay at the resort. There was one of the rooms that didn't get flooded, so I, we, I'd sort of spent a whole afternoon cleaning it and everything, and I called my friend on the main island, Elena, and, and I told her that we were going to stay down there and. I just, because I was still feeling very panicked, I just said, you know, if if for some reason they hear news before us, could they call us? Because, you know, we we put the cars facing out and everything. Because at this point, we didn't know if the volcano was still active or, or what what could happen next. I think that was on the, the Monday night. So we'd known that they were looking for um, my friend, Angela. You guys know her too, Angela. We'd sort of known in Ewa that they'd been looking for her. And... Um, yeah, she broke down in tears and she said, oh, Kelly, I didn't want to tell you this over the phone, but, you know, Angela's missing, presumed dead, taken by the waves. And, um, yeah, she said, please just move out of there, go back up the top. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, whole houses are just gone in the west side. Don't yeah. don't be silly. So hearing of the news of Angela just kind of resulted in this real anxious feeling in the pit of my stomach. And I kind of made him pack everything up in a few minutes and leave, even though... I mean, yeah. we weren't in immediate danger, but I just got that that feeling inside me again that we had to we had to leave. So, just a bit of backstory for everyone, I guess. Um, Angela was founder of of Tours, um, Tonga Animal Welfare Society, and um, she's been doing amazing things for all the animals in Tonga for a while. And um, you said before that you've been taking over a fair bit of. Um, her work there we've just been helping with some of the yeah just the phone calls we get people trying to help their sick animals and just a few things like that trying to fill a, a huge huge void that Angela left I mean she was just incredible with everything she did every day yeah yeah we were really really um sad to hear about that but I'm so glad that you're continuing that on because, I mean, that's something that we've been thinking about. I know that there's been so much aid for the people coming in um, and we're like, but you got to think about the animals too. Um, that's our classic, you know, the sheen gene. We classically always think of the animals. I think here on the main island, a lot of dogs ran away from the noise, but in doing yeah. that, they ran towards the ocean and ended up getting caught in the waves. I'm pretty sure we saw a lot of, just when we were driving around, a lot of horses in Ewa had fully pulled out their, um, so obviously they get tethered, and a lot of them had uh, had broken free of their ropes. So to have that much fear, they must have, you know, really, really pulled on it. And yeah. Again, yeah, most of the animals in Tonga are tethered, which is 
you know, even if, you, if even if they knew that it was coming, a lot of them couldn't do anything. So I, yeah. I can imagine that there's been a few tragedies with that. I saw some pictures that the Australian um, the Australian Army was feeding dogs that had been abandoned on Atata. Yeah. Uh, so that was amazing that they they were feeding all of their scraps um, to the animals there while they could. Yeah. And they were in contact with, with tours and the board of tours and, and contacting uh, Jeff and Spore, just, you know, what to do with a lot of those animals. But it has been quite distressing worrying about some animals that were potentially left behind during evacuations. So, because co- uh, Tong has been COVID-free for the whole pandemic up until all the support vessels came in. How, like, how has that affected everyone? Yeah, I think it was probably not the best timing to have a lot of people that had gone through such a big traumatic event, a lot of anxiety, and then sort of isolate them in their homes alone. Actually, one of the first thunderstorms we had, I saw kids physically running around the outside of their homes, sort of, they'd internalised a lot of it. And all of a sudden, people were isolated and locked in um, and had this new fear of, of COVID. And, you know, obviously, two years, being locked in the country, you start to, people have this really built up anxiety of, of what happens when it gets here. So yeah, there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. Yeah. I know people on those outer islands are dealing with a lack of, of supplies. So because they've had to put a lot of the things into quarantine for three days, it means that no, nothing like, you know, chicken or meat or anything like that can go on the ferries because they have to be quarantined yeah. for three days before they're getting released to people. It's been really intense. I think it's people have om- almost had to get over the volcano really quickly and now deal with a, a huge, another anxiety causing event. You know, I think a lot of people here are dealing with that, that they, they just want to see their families. They just want to hug them. They just want to, you know, be together again with, with people they love. And I know a lot of people outside of Tonga wish they could get in. So yeah, it's definitely almost exasperated the 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 whole experience is the fact that even when we got the internet back which which was amazing yeah that's a that's like a lot to take in I'm kind of just like (laughs) it's yeah as I said before it's like it's been all just hearing secondhand news but hearing a first-hand story is just next level like yeah yeah, I think it's also it's also actually really good for those of us that experience to to talk about it because I realized um, just afterwards when I when I started telling my family and that it um, it really helped sort of process it in, in my own head and not many people get to experience and live through this sort of event so it's it's a pretty amazing story to share and I mean not saying that it's a good thing but it's a definitely a fascinating uh, thing to have lived through in your life and <laughs> yeah. yeah all right well um I think that's all the questions I have for now thank you so much for sharing the story it's been it's just amazing to hear from your side of the the world about everything I'll, I'll leave it at that so I'll Lena's be- giving you a kiss <laughs> 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 Well, I just had this amazing phone call with Kaylee. Uh, I'm, I'm actually speechless. It, it's amazing to hear a first-hand story of everything that's happened in Tonga and everything everyone's going through. And um, I, again, want to just express my gratitude to everyone that sent support and kind words and everything to everyone in Tonga and to us and... I appreciate it all, we appreciate it all, and thanks again to Kaylee for sharing your story. Until next time.